YouTubers. It's Michael Jones from Michael Jones Custom Knives. I thought today I'd take a minute and walk you through the, some of the features of my home built uh, knife forging press here. This is the press I use to do all my Damascus billets and uh, for my knife making uh, that I do here out of my garage. Uh, I'll talk you through how I built this, uh, some of the features of the press itself and show you some of the various dies that I've built for it. And again, if you have questions about this press or how I built it, you can ask any questions you want and put those in the comments. Let's take a look at it. I'll start at the top of the press and talk about its fe features and, and work my way down. First of all, I have a four inch bore, eight, eight inch stroke cylinder that puts out approximately 37,000 pounds PSI or roughly 18 and a half tons worth of pressure. I bought the cylinder online. These are readily available, so if you do any searches online, you can find these and lots of different vendors have those out there. The frame and the carriage for the press itself, the upper half here, is bolted on to this cart that I built. As If you've watched any of my other videos, I make everything mobile so that I can roll it around inside my garage. But the frame itself is constructed out of two by two tubing. That's a quarter inch wall thick, heavy duty tubing. And then any other pieces you see on here are either one inch thick or half inch thick plate steel. For example, these slides here are made out of half inch steel and they're designed in a way so that where the dies fit on, they, they can be unbolted with these two bolts off of either side and I can actually replace that middle section if it ever wears out or if, if something breaks, I can actually disassemble it. Clevis pins on top with, with one inch plate steel with qu quarter inch spacers welded in. Also have quarter inch angle braces up here for extra uh, strength. And then on the bottom piece for the bottom die, that's actually a two inch piece of steel uh, welded in to the base again with quarter inch reinforcements on the corners to give it extra strength. Um, the valve pack that came with it, I bought a standard uh, log splitter 11 gallon per minute pump. It came with the standard auto return detent valve. I added a pressure gauge that goes up to 5,000 PSI. This runs at around 3,000 PSI. The pump and the cylinder are rated for 3,500 PSI, including the hoses. Everything you see uh, here is commercially bought either at the big box store nearby or bought online. But moving to the bottom, I built a 10 gallon tank. I actually built the tank. I did not purchase it. And it's hooked up to the 11 gallon per minute uh, log splitter pump. I've seen in a lot of comments that people don't think that a log splitter, splitter pump is fast enough. But from my experience, it works plenty fast. I have it hooked up to a five horse uh, 240 volt electric motor with just a switch start. And I mounted the oil fil filter and return down underneath here with a pressure gauge on the oil filter itself. The tank is not bolted down. The, the tank is just sitting on the frame. I do have, if you can see down here in the back, I do have a tab welded on that holds the tank in place to keep it from moving along with a drain so that I can drain the tank. Inside the tank, it's baffled. So it's baffled with offset returns to cool the oil as it circulates. Also, coming out of the line on the suction side for the, for the log splitter, splitter pump, inside that connection there is a wire mesh uh, filter as well to trap any you know, any, any uh, trash, any debris, any leftover welding slag, anything I might have missed when I, when I built the tank. 
Everything's designed to be replaceable. Everything's bolted together and designed to be mobile. The die mounting brackets are quick change. As you can see here, I've got just a standard flat die in here right now. I have a twistable tab here that allows me just to slide slide the, um, the dies in and out, pop it back in and lock it down with the tab. Same thing on top, twist it, pull it out and quick change. Uh, the one other thing I wanted to mention is on these brackets or holders for the dies on the top and bottom, they're actually bolted in place uh, with half inch bolts offset in each corner so that if I want to remove those completely, I can. If you notice on my several of my dies, I have a half inch hole in each corner and I can actually put a half inch bolt in that directly and bolt the die onto the base here. Um, onto the base if I want to uh, run in that setup but normally I use it in the quick change configuration for the dies themselves you can see I've got several different ones sitting here I got some different size squaring dies I got some height dies here uh, half inch three quarter quarter inch etc uh, for flat stock and getting different heights. I have my cutter here for making like feather Damascus. I uh, also have some half round dies. I don't have them on the cart right here, but they're for, you know, drawing steel out. Again, everything's designed, as I said, to be quick change. The dies are just built on quarter inch, three by six inch plate. Um, the height dies here, they're just designed to slip over the flat die. The height dies just pop on top of the flat dies so I can pop those in and off while I'm forging, change different heights. In this case, I've got the uh, half inch die stop on there. But if I need to change that out for any others, I can just quickly pop those in and off. All right, I'll power up the press and just quickly demonstrate you know, it in operation. Uh, again, it's a 240 volt uh, motor. I just installed a 30 amp breaker with a standard 240 volt outlet here in my garage to run it. Uh, I will also include at the end of this video after I demo the, you know, the, just the cylinder in operation, I'll include some pictures of when I was building this. And then at the end of the video, I'll throw in some short clips of this press in operation while I'm actually forging some steel so you can see, see it in actual use. All right, I'm gonna power it up. It'll be a little loud. We'll flip the switch. To operate, again, pull the handle. And if you look at the gauge, See that peg out at 3,000 psi, then the auto return will hit, so you don't over squeeze or over pressurize, bust the hose. If you notice though, that's pretty quick. The travel time on that cylinder is pretty fast. 
Um, partly because I have a high RPM, five horse motor, driving that 11, a gall 11 gallon per minute pump. But uh, that's basically it. It's a standard press. It's, it, you turn it on, you pull the lever and it squeezes, it smashes. You sure don't want to get your fingers in there, that's for sure. Uh, normally when I'm forging, I'll operate the, you know, the valve with my right hand and obviously hold my billet with my left and run it in and out of the dies depending on how I'm forging. I have thought about building a foot pedal for this and running it down and making it detachable so that if I want to, I could just sit down here and operate the, the valve with my foot. So far, I haven't really had a need to do that, but if I ever run into some situations where I need both hands on you know, a very large piece of stock or a very large billet that I just can't handle one-handed, then I may go ahead and build something like that as an adapt as an add-on to the press.